Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Amazed by the Quran, a series in which I try to share with you things I find amazing about the Quran. Continuing on the subject of plurals, this is the last session I'll have with you guys about plurals. Uh, I'll actually have a further conversation with you about skies. I mentioned this in a previous session where I talked to you about the difference between sky and skies. And I told you that sky in, in the Quran is actually uh, limit, uh, limitless. Whatever lies above is sama. And a limited term is samawat. There are two ayat that are very similar in the Quran. Uh, one belongs in the third surah, Ali Imran. The other belongs in the 57th surah, Hadid. Now I'll read the ayah in Arabic and I will also translate it for you. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Rush, rush to the remembrance or to the forgiveness from your master. Rush to forgiveness that comes from your master. And rush towards a heaven, a jannah, a garden, whose, sky, whose size is the skies and the earth. Now I'd like you to remember this part. The, what is Jannah size compared to, heaven size compared to? The skies, plural, the skies and the earth. It has been prepared, u'iddat lil muttaqeen, for people who are cautious. Okay, so in this ayah, what is the size of Jannah compared to? It is the size of the skies and the earth. And I'm reminding you again, skies are limited. Skies are limited. What's unlimited? Sama, sky. The singular is unlimited because it's whatever lies above. It's not limited to seven. Now, the other ayah, this belongs to hadid. Sabiqu ila maghfiratim min rabbikum. Race. The previous ayah said, rush. This one says, race. To forgiveness from your master. Wa jannatin arduha. And a garden whose size, ka'ard is sama'i wal ard, is something like the size of whatever lies above and the earth. Wait. One was the size of Jannah that you should work for is equal to the skies, plural. This one, the size of Jannah is close to, it's something like the size of whatever lies above the sky. Meaning the, big, the sky is bigger this time. The sky is bigger this time, it's whatever lies above. So how come one Jannah is compared to a smaller space and the other Jannah is compared to a bigger space? How does that work? And the other one, it was an equality. In other words, its size is the, sky, the size of the skies and the earth. This one is, its size is nearly equal to whatever lies above. But not quite. It's not equal. Okay. The awesomeness of these ayat, first of all, is that one Jannah was prepared for al-muttaqeen, for people who have taqwa. People who are God conscious. And it's not the only quality. The people of God consciousness who spend when it's easy and when it's difficult. And people who suppress their anger. And people who pardon others lovingly. Whoa. And Allah loves those who excel. Wait, wait, wait. So this Jannah has been prepared for the God conscious who spend when it's easy or difficult who also suppress their anger and lovingly pardon people and excel. Is that everybody? That's actually a very limited number of people. I mean, you could be God conscious, but not spend. But being God conscious and being someone who spends, or maybe spending secretly and openly, whoa, that's even less number of people. On top of that, okay, you're God conscious, you spend and you suppress your anger, now there's a less, lesser group of people. And on top of that, you pardon others you know, willingly and lovingly. Whoa, that's even a lesser group of people. And on top of that, you excel in everything you do. Whoa, that's a really limited number of people. You got it? Now when he dark talked about that Jannah, you know what he said? Uh, it's Jannah is actually lesser in size because you don't need that much space for those lesser people. It actually restricts the population that will enter that Jannah. So Samawat, the skies. But the second Jannah, he said that it's, it can be compared to a much larger sky. The sky, everything that lies above, it's much bigger. So I ask myself, wait, so the second Jannah is being compared to much bigger real estate. If it's more real estate, it means there's got to be more people in it. So who is this Jannah prepared for? Listen to this carefully. He says, أُعِدَّتْ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ It has been prepared for those who believed in Allah and any or all of His messengers. No other condition. No other condition. Compare the conditions in the first Jannah, and what do you find? People that are already awesome because they're muttaqeen. Then they're super awesome on top of that because they spend and they're charitable. When it's easy and when it's hard. 
you know, when it's open or private or public, then on top of that, they forgive and they, they suppress it. Oh my God, these are amazing people. They have special real estate. But much wider doors of heaven have been opened. And the only condition God places on these people is, so long as you believe in Allah and His messengers. Look at the word messengers. Because you know what that does? That opens the door to everybody from Adam salam to now, anybody who believed in any messenger. It's so broad. Now, when you appreciate that, then you start realizing that Allah has actually opened the gates of Jannah pretty wide in this next ayah. Like it seemed when you just study the ayah of Ali Imran that the, the gates are open for a limited group. But in this ayah, the gates are open far and wide, so wide open. That's a huge favor from Allah, isn't it? In other words, what I'm trying to get at to you is in the ayah of Ali Imran, Allah has done us uh, given us requirements for heaven, but in the ayah of hadith, Allah has done us a favor like nowhere else. A much bigger favor. Look at the perfection of Allah's speech. Something He says in hadith, He does not say in Ali Imran. He says, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ That is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever He wants. And Allah possesses the ultimate favor. The ayah in which He did humanity a bigger favor by not putting hard restrictions on heaven. <laughs> he ended the ayah by saying, that's the favor I give and I can give whatever favor I want. I possess all the favors. Because human beings hear that I say, no, 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 but you should put more conditions on people. You should have more restrictions. You shouldn't just give them, you shouldn't just tell them this part. There should be more things that are said and they pray and they do this and they do this. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do any of those things. But Allah is opening that door because He wants to give hope. You know what I'm reminded of? I'm reminded of a famous saying of the Prophet ﷺ, famous incident in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. A guy comes to the Prophet ﷺ and says, Ubayi'uka ala salatayn. It's so, so awesome. He says, I'm, I'm ready to pledge my allegiance to you. Pledging your allegiance to the Prophet means accepting Islam. I'm ready to pledge my allegiance to you for two prayers. How many prayers was supposed to pray? Five. Companions are sitting in his company. Homeboy shows up and says, I'm ready to be Muslim, but I ain't going to give you more than two. The Prophet ﷺ says, that's fine, pledge your allegiance. The companions are in shock like, uh, uh, five is a pretty big deal. You're not supposed to, how did you let that go? And the guy went off happy, <laughs> got it. Rasul ﷺ described to them that once he tastes the sweetness of prayer, he'll come to five himself. When you start worrying about controlling what pe how people will grow, Allah has a plan for how people will grow. Allah in this ayah says, just believe in Allah and His Messenger. And when that faith enters your heart, how that will grow into good deeds is natural. You don't have to restrict that. So don't make people hopeless from the beginning. Don't give too many requirements from the beginning. That's the beauty of this message. Allah gives people enough that they can get hope. And once they have hope, they can improve themselves and they, they hold themselves more responsible, then they grow more, then they hold themselves more responsible. Instead of Allah burdening everything on them from the beginning, let them grow and mature so they can carry burdens on their own. This is the beauty of our religion. Just between these two ayat, how Allah opens the doors to Jannah, may Allah Azza wa Jal enter us into the highest levels of Jannah and allow us to enter through those wonderful gates. Barakallahu wa lakum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.